right, well, um, yeah, as uh, Jody just mentioned, a little warmer in here today, so feel free to take your coats off. If you, <laughs> you don't have to leave your mittens at the door. Um, we're going to open up this morning with any prayer requests or testimonies anybody might have as everybody makes their way to their seats. <laughs> Maybe we'll give everybody a minute. <laughs> yes, Tammy. I just want to remember um, my best friend, all grown up in junior high and high school. Um, she passed away about eight years ago, but um, she was like my second mom. She passed away on Tuesday. So I just want to pray for the family. It was very quick. They found out she had cancer on the third, and she died on the night. Wow. Um, so. Wow. Uh, I'm sure they're still trying to wrap their heads around it. Yeah. So just some comfort and some peace while they wrap their heads around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, What's the family thing? Um, I'd say the summer thing. Okay. 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 Summer. okay. Any other prayer requests? Uh, yeah, Peter. Okay, so um, I'll try to make this brief if I can. So last night for uh, Kingdom House of Prayer, just, I felt like I got hit literally by a teaser when it was time to go. I felt like all of a sudden, not really electricity, but like a blank or something that's thrown over me. Felt so sick, felt so weak, you know, like like I had no blood sugar. Um, but my blood sugar got really low. And just, I, I had to sit on the floor of my hallway and I'm like, okay, I know this is a spiritual attack. I know that, you know, this is the enemy not wanting me to go, but I just felt so sick. I did not sick to, I felt like I could throw up, but I knew I couldn't throw up. And so the Lord, so I had Jamie pray for me, and the Lord just had me kept saying, you know, I, with every step I take, the blood of Jesus equips me, the blood of Jesus propels me. And, and literally it was a half hour of just the blood of Jesus is this, the blood of Jesus is that, to get up there to the King of House of Prayer. So God, the King of House of Prayer, at the first a little bit of the after effects still there, but it felt great and everything. Yeah, it felt awesome leaving Kingdom House of Prayer. And then right away on the way back home, I started feeling sick again and everything. So, it was, but it was awesome because I was able to use what the Holy Spirit was giving me and equipping me to fight that and press through. So, so that was, that's the phrase there. Um, second, um, the Lord's been telling me about some things. So I need prayer for favor and open doors for this project man for this one project manager who's causing mm -hmm. some issues at work, as well as her boss. Um, I need prayer from my boss. This is the boss that they thought had lupus, you know, and she, I believe she had lupus and Lord healed her, but now we're saying, you know, she didn't have lupus. Right. They yeah. misread the test. So, but because my boss, she's going through all of this crap too. And I hope I can see crap in church because I just did. <laughs> um, anyway, the, um, sometimes I think out loud. Uh, so my boss, though, on one occasion, is just like, I'm so sorry to have been unloading on you and telling you all this stuff and everything. I'm like, no, that's okay, because I, I know that the Lord showed me that I'm supposed to be there right now to my boss. Because my boss, she, her husband got let go of work. He's only able to find a job in a grocery store. They had to sell their house that they've owned for years because they couldn't afford the mortgage payments anymore. And they, they're downsizing and everything. And my boss has been working two jobs, one at Wells and the second at office, Max office depot at night. And she's an incredible lady, I love her. That's why I took the job, is just the opportunity to work for her. So she needs prayer, but the Lord told me that I'm not supposed to be praying for my work situation anymore. I need to be praying for a better mindset, a different mindset. So that's what I need prayer for. Yeah. Um, I thank the uh, worship team for all those who were able to join in. Uh, Friday night, and, uh, Saturday night, and also this morning. Um, the Lord usually leads me to different uh, worship sets for each venue, uh, but the Lord specifically, after I went through a uh, physical battle for 24 hours, started three in the morning, got right after the church, went on for quite a while, um, 24 hours about. Anyway, we came up through it in the midst of that and says, no, I want you to go with what I give you. And instead of you trying to integrate with the venue where you were at, you need to take this and create the atmosphere at the venue you are going to. And I've never done that before, but it took uh, Friday night. It was awesome. I thank the Lord for what happened here Friday night. 
and it was at that time it was working on our younger generation, it was crying out about our younger, younger generation. And yesterday morning, I went up to Heartland because I had to uh, do some technical work with one of the keyboards uh, up there to learn the different sounds because I wasn't going to take my cork because taking it out cold weather is not, not very good for it. So I went up there and unbeknown to me, I was going to wind up in that curb instead of the main sanctuary. Uh, I went in the curb and where they were at and with my headphones on I was able to get all the sounds. But as I was getting up ready to leave, the Lord more or less put me in a seatbelt and looked like me out of the seat. And I remained there and plugged the sound back in, took the headphones off and played along with the group that was there. Uh, the Holy Spirit was uh, moving and also was in the same realm that we were at Friday night. In fact, it was the same chord progression we started with on Friday night. And several of the women, specifically one uh, cried out, that their uh, child is caught into a uh, cult situation called a Burning Man, uh, which is satanic, if I'm not mistaken, in, in its realm. Uh, it's all starting with uh, just playing things, dabbling around in things you shouldn't be, and getting caught up in these things. But that wasn't the only one. There were several people that were caught in this thing. And I'm hearing this cry of mothers uh, in the room at the drum circle yesterday morning at 9 29 30 and we cried out about these things and, and the lord was faithful uh when we hear breakthrough going on i could just tell in the spirit realm things were being dealt with and then when the eastern gate uh, fired up at uh, uh seven o'clock last night up there at the uh, heartland at the Fairburn, um it started in the same thing it was, it was to deal with the next generation it was to deal with things that people were uh, dealing with their children and their grandchildren and other things going on. And in the midst of all this, I saw the breaking, I saw the releasing, I saw it not only on the youth, but also on youth groups. We prayed over the venue for Winter Jam over at Wells Fargo. Uh, um, I had a guy in the morning actually run around the room and, and created a Holy Ghost firewall. Uh, we claimed that for over here and over other youth groups in this region and also over Wells Fargo. Um, there's some awesome stuff going on. Uh, before the night was over, and it took an hour and a half to get right through this situation, but as the, uh, we got past the 90 minutes into the last quarter of the session, things started freeing up, and I was, we were able to minister to the mothers and the parents and the, and the grandparents and everyone that was in that room that was so burdened with this, this intercession that they need to be filled back up. And the next thing we saw and uh, was that I got to see in my spirit realm was this circle of fire that was in this room. Uh, the Lord started pouring in his water splash oil and started filling up so the people that were there that were interceding, that were standing in the gap for the kids and for the youth and for the youth groups and everything else were going to get filled back up with Holy Ghost so they could further these things. Mm -hmm. So I saw at that point in time it was clear up to my knees. Woo! It was clear up to my knees and I couldn't I couldn't handle I could hardly stand. And we pressed in and we pressed in and by the time things were over, everyone in that room was moving in the Lord. Everyone yes. in that room and there were probably uh, what 50, 60 people in that Amen. room at that time. So it's on people. Woo! And yes. the confirmation about the oil thing up to my knees. My dog's never done this, but I got home and all they would do is sniff my pant legs from my knees down my ankle pull for five minutes. They would just what is that? What is that? What is that? So I'm not I'm not losing it, I'm just revealing it. Okay, so praise, God. Praise, God. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Any prayer requests or testimonies this morning? Tim. Yes, I uh, asked for prayer um, for the people on trip this next week and uh, pray that all the connections and plans and everything will be, you know, well. It doesn't happen at airports, fly a lot. Uh, and also, Friday night, uh, I went out with the students. We had to do our night drive. You know, thankfully, that the roads were good, you know, because that's always a concern when we take them out. But I, I always, uh, when the uh, students say, uh, well, this happened because it was just luck, you know, that's always over the door. 
to, to them when they say means love is you no. Know, you know, it's not love. It's the blessing of the Lord. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and I thank the Lord for that opportunity when it comes, especially when we're in the truck. It was just three of us that night and, and sometimes they do have a conversation about the future and and, and what's held for them and, and uh, I, I think just thank the Lord that you can pray for them and thank the Lord that you can lift them up that they make the right decisions about their life. Sometimes things come out of them about the history and things they've been through and they're so thankful they got to this point and want some direction for the next point and when you can point them toward the Lord Amen. I mean that that is just such a blessing to be able to do that. Amen. And just want to thank the Lord. Um, I just want to share this as we're all um, speaking on prayer and testimony is I said it I think a couple weeks ago God wants us asking big he wants us to think big and believe big in our situations and he brought to me to my attention when Joshua asked the son to stand still so that they could battle really the son stands still the orbit of the earth stood still so God so in that it's like Man, if God can make the earth stop spinning for Joshua to battle for that sun, what more can he do for us? So I just wanted to share that. I mean, God wants to do the big things in our lives. We're not mediocre. So. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Last week, I had a strange thing happen. Our granddaughter, Reagan, has a she has had an emotional problem. And she called and she said, uh, can I come over and you guys pray for me? Well, of course. But we have done that before. So that night when we were in bed, I, was, I had her on my mind. And I thought, you know, I sought the Lord and said, Lord, but how do we handle this? What do you want me to do? How, how can we handle this? And I began to see her in the living room, standing on the Bible. And I said, well, I, Lord, you gotta, this is me, because I've done that before. I did it with Jane. You, you told me to do that with her. This is not the same thing. Jane was battling cancer. This is, this is demonic. That's tor tormenting her. And again, it, it kept coming to my mind to do that. And I thought, is this really you? And, oh, the Spirit of the Lord came all over me. So I put that to rest. That was the Lord. All right. She came over. We were obedient. We went around her seven times. The Lord made it very clear. As you do that, in obedience, a wall is put up around her that's impenetrable. That Spirit cannot get to her. It may try, but it can't get to her. So, anyhow, for, I don't know why. I went in and I was going through our bookshelves and I happened to pull out the Septuagint, which I never hardly look at. And I was summoned through it for no particular reason. I come to the book of Tobit, T-O-B-I-T. -T. Now this is after, well, no, maybe it was before Reagan had come over, but after I had in my mind what to do. And this, I want you to, I want you to listen because this is how God works. I just opened it up, and I just, you know, how we've all done, just put your finger down and start reading. And I was reading about when the angel told Tobit to pull this fish out of the water and to gut it to keep the heart, the liver, and the gall. Now, what had happened, he was the, he was the eighth one to go into this young woman that she'd had seven husbands that had never been able to consummate the marriage because in the marriage chamber they all died. And it was because of a jealous evil spirit. So anyhow, the angel said, you take that when you go in and you put the liver, the heart, and the gall, and you cover it with ashes of perfume. I don't know what that is, but he said, when that smoke rises, he said, that demon will smell that and will run away from it and never come back. And of course, her father had a 
grave dug for him and never came home. Right. He's not going to last. Nobody has. And of course, they sent servants, and lo and behold, he was okay. Now, to me, out of nowhere, I get this, and it told me that God, then it came to me, you know, about when Jesus said, This, by the way, after he chewed the disciples out, they're not cast out the devil. He said, By the way, this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. And I began to see that if we seek God, there are methods that he that he has given us that are absolutely they work mm -hmm. they work yeah. you know they may sound crazy to us who would take a fish and save the heart and liver you know i'm not sure i've ever seen a fish in the river, but i guess there was in there but I, I, I marveled at that that god confirmed to me an act now that's the second or third time that he has said, this was what was strange though, he said, I want her shoes and socks off. I want her on this barefooted. Barefooted? Because he said everything that's in that will go right up from the bottom yeah. to the top yeah. instead of the top to the bottom. And I say, praise the Lord. I never thought of that. From the bottom to the top. Praise For what it's worth. Peter. Yeah, um, just got a text from Jamie. She's had some weird breakout on her arm, and it's really in a lot of pain. Um, last few days, she's not coming to church. Uh, she won't go into work. So, she needs to prepare for that. Amen. Yeah. Um, has she ever had last I don't know. Probably. Well, but I believe it's. Sheila. I would just call and want us to pray for her as well. Okay. Anyone else this morning? Yes, yes. Lord. I just thank you for filling me with that hope. Yes. 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 Lord. Jesus. Glory. Yes. 
And I can't even explain it with mere words. Mm. Words just, you know, I know there's life and death and the power of the tongue. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God is so good. Yes, and yes, Jesus yes. is. Yes. yes. Our deliverer. Hallelujah. Our healer. Yes. Our savior. Yes. He gives us all good things. Yes. 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 And he does yes. things that. Mm -hmm. Praise God. In an instant. Yes. 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 I mean, even though you've been going through it, he'll do it in an instant. Yes. 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 I can't even express it really. I can't. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, yes, thank you, Lord. And I know He is doing something new today. Yes, yes. Lord. Yes. 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 I felt it. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I thank you for it. Oh, yes. Glory. Yes. Lord. It's a wellspring bubbling up and running yes. over of yes. hope, yes. vision, yes. purpose. Yes will come to pass yes, to. every name spoken here today hope yes. for a vision yes. for focus yes. for the next step to walk in their divine purpose yes. they were created for the glory of god yes. and they will all every person here there every person mentioned yes, today Lord. they will walk out yes. the purpose god has for the glory of the kingdom of yes. jesus christ yes. Yes.
earth, and that it was like a pool, and that it was filling up with the oily water. The Lord asked me just a few minutes ago when Rita was talking, she said, do you know where that oil and water comes from? I says, it comes from you. He says, I know that. Duh. But where does it come from? Through Jesus? I said, yeah. Where's Jesus at? He's here. But where is he residing? Makes us abode. He says in us. Where do you think the water's coming from? It's coming from you. It's coming from us, church. What do you think's filling that pool up? This pool will not get filled up with the oil in the presence of the Lord until we start opening up and letting it pour out. Time to fill this pool up. Time to fill this place up. Come on, church. It's time to pour out. he said he would do. Expecting God to do more than we can ask or think. Expecting God to be who God is and do what he does. Holly was saying that, or uh, Tracy was saying that Friday night. Do what you do, God. Do what you do. Do what you do. Do what you do, Lord. He does more than we can ask or think. But that doesn't mean we stop asking and we stop thinking. You know? Expectation. Expectation. What do we expect from God? What are we hungry for? What do we want more of? Ask Him. It's His good pleasure to give good gifts to His children. Yes. Cindy's been after me for days, months, years about provision. I get to do the book work and work with Quick and Book Works and everything else like that. And she has to remind me constantly of who our provision is. And I'll see things go in the red. And she and her way keeps her peace. And that launches on me. Thank God for that. <laughs> the Lord says we need to do this for a time now also. I don't know who has their calendar filled up for this year, but the Lord's telling me to take my calendar and throw it out. But if he's gonna move, it's gonna be a day-by-day -day situation. If you have things planned. Those are your plans. Yesterday morning it was declared. When I gave my heart to Jesus, when I gave my life to Jesus, 
my life is not mine anymore. I can't save my life. I say it's his life in me. It's his provision in me. So I don't know what you got for plans for this year, this month, this week. As for me, I get to go to a funeral. It's, it's at 1 o'clock. But here's the plan that God says. I want you to have this church pray for you as you go. It's time for a Lazarus moment at this funeral. Most of the people that are at this gathering, they're called a celebration of life. They're celebrating what his life was about. He was a well-known uh, stock car driver in this region. Most of the people there, I don't think, know the Lord. The people I know that will be there do not know the Lord. A Lazarus moment would change all that every moment. It would just like that, just like the same. Instantly, instantly. Amen. So stand with me in this situation, okay? Every funeral I've gone to in the last 15, 20 years, I've prayed this next to the casket. Arise. Arise. Yes. I might not speak it out loudly or anything else like that, but a still small voice voice can take care of that situation. Okay? There may be a time where I shout it out. Maybe it's today's the day. I don't know. I'm going to freak people out. I don't know. I don't care because it's not my life anymore. It's his life. So when you leave today, remember, it's not your life anymore. It's his life. It's time. It's time. It's Just a reminder if you brought a cell phone today to go ahead and turn it off. And Winter Jam, uh, Friday, January 26th. So any of the youth that would like to come, anybody else would like to join the youth, um, we will let us know. definitely put a sign-up schedule because we need to know by next Sunday exactly who's going, uh, how we're going to go. We have to have a strategy, we have to have a meeting place or um, somewhere we can coordinate. I don't, I don't want anybody confused. I'd, I'd like us all to be together. Uh, iron sharpening iron. So uh, that way we can test, have testimonies testify and share things with each other here when we come back, but also share it together so the experience will even be more. So. Okay. All right. We're talking about expectation, me and my story time, right? So yesterday I heard this story about this little girl. Uh, they lived on a uh, Farm and she kept wanting to have this little calf and dad kept saying, no, you cannot have any, we have to sell these. And she just kept pestering him and pestering him. Finally, he says, all he had was brown, and brown calf, so he knew that there was no way he was gonna get this. He says, okay, if, if uh, we have a black calf born, you can, get, you can have this calf. So this little girl went into prayer. Lord, I need a black calf. Lord, please give me a black calf. <laughs> sure enough, this little calf was born, and it was totally black all over except for one little white spot here that had a J. This little girl's name was Jasmine. So there was no doubt in, in, in Dad's mind that this was supposed to be her calf. The Lord went above and beyond because her black calf, he put her mark on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if we talk about expectation, if we have that expectation of a little child, I mean, this kid... She'll pastor me till, till I give in and give in and give in, you know, if we come with expectation right. and ask above and beyond, the right. Lord wants to give it to us for sure. Amen. Before we out, um, I had um, told you guys about a couple years ago when I started working for Can Do Cancer, the lady that I went in and prayed with that was laying there and said that you're like an angel because this was the worst day of my life. She's in the hospital, and I saw yesterday she was asking for prayer. She's been on my mind all week. I just keep in touch with her through Facebook. I don't clean anymore because it's limited what I can do. But uh, she has a bowel obstruction, and she's asked that we pray. So I'm praying with expectation that we hear a good report today. And she's talking about hope. There's a lady that I have to go clean for named Hope, which I haven't met yet three times. Now I'm supposed to go tomorrow after your house because she lives in Bonda Ranch. Uh, she's had to reschedule because of health issues, but you know, she gave us hope this morning. She said the word hope. Evelyn's prayer request in full was pray because Satan's tried to take away my gifts and callings. And you had just said something right after she spoke, and I thought, wow, I should have given the rest of Evelyn's <laughs> <laughs> prayer. But you know, that's what Satan comes to do, like she said, is kill, kill, and destroy, but he has no power. 
Don and Toby, you two want to come take an offering this morning? Toby, you want to ask the blessing, please? Lord, we're thankful to be here today, God, to hear of your glory, God. God, when we ask things in you, we have sparked our faith, God, and therefore have started the fire, Lord. Now we just ask that you continue to fan it. Consume it, Lord God, and all these things that we have declared here today, in your name, God, come forth, Lord. We stand faithfully in your word, God. It is our constitutional strong point, God. Everything leans back to your word. Yes. We believe it, Lord. We release it each and every day into our life and into the world around us. Now, Lord, we just ask that you bless this offering, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
appreciate especially those last two songs really just exactly what I want to talk about <clears throat> amen this morning but appreciate all of your testimonies and prayer requests and your encouragement a lot of times even when you're when you're sharing your situations and circumstances it really is an encouragement to other people because everybody isn't saying everything that's going on in their life but uh, God knows Yes. And uh, we have kindred spirit, amen. We have the same spirit, and so it's uh, spirit speaks to spirit. Praise the Lord, and God bless all of you for being unashamed, yes, yes, unafraid to just say what God's doing in your life and what you're expecting Him to do in your life, amen. No fear in God, perfect love casts out fear, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, amen. I'm excited Thank about what God is doing. Yes. Amen. And I, I just know that uh, whatever it is your need is, He knew it long before the need ever came to you. And He already provided the means 
to overcome it, yes. to provide for it, and to defeat it, whatever that situation might call for. Yes. Praise God. He's all things to all people. Praise Lord. And He's perfect for every situation and every circumstance. Amen. Let's give Him a big hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless all of you. you. May be seated. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thanks again to everybody and uh, the worship team. Great job as always. Praise the Lord. And I want to uh, just make a special mention, and I know they don't ask for it and don't even really probably want it, but they're going to get it anyhow. Praise the Lord. I appreciate uh, Toby and, and Don being down there working on things yes, last Sunday during the church. And I know it was Toby doing most of the uh, wrench turning, but John brought, or Don brought some expertise. Praise the Lord. He's got a few years in... He's got a few years behind that too, so uh, praise the Lord. And then on top of that, I, I want to thank Wyckoff Industries and, and Toby in particular for taking care of that motor. And then Toby came back out this week and, and, and changed them out again, and uh, everything is working great. And, I, and we really do appreciate it. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord. Amen for that family and uh, for all that they've meant to me personally as well as to this church as a body. So uh, thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. All right. Praise God. It's uh, Sunday school kids. If you haven't already bailed, you can go now. Praise the Lord. They are moving pretty quick. About the time they see this old man up here, they take off like they're shot at. Praise the Lord. Amen. I was telling my daughter the other day, she stopped by the house for... She, oh, I know. She had, she had uh, her and her husband had made a bookshelf for me and because uh, the bookshelves downstairs had, were full and they were starting to stack stuff up on the bottoms and so she, they made another one for me and uh, put it upstairs where I spend a lot of time. Amen. It's my man cave upstairs, praise the Lord. But uh, anyhow, uh, and so I wanted her to see that it fit perfectly where they had designed it for and everything. Anyway, she came up and I was, I was telling her about um, the advantages that Adam and Eve had over us. And probably the greatest of those were they escaped teething. Probably. They were adults. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And she was spiritually moved. I could tell just from the brief conversation that we had that touched her deeply. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. And I know some of you may be thinking he's quenching the spirit. No, I, I'm not capable of doing that. God's, God's too big. God's too big for me to mess up his stuff. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm just trying to transition here. Praise the Lord. That's what I call it anyway. You know, uh, before I kind of grew up, I was an adult. I just hadn't grown up. Um, I spent a lot of time. I was bartender and waiter and <clears throat> did a lot of that stuff all around the country. Just you know, just because you have to have an income, you know, you got to feed yourself and so forth. But uh, I like waiters. They bring a lot to the table. All right, so you don't want to go there with me, but I, uh, you know, yesterday I had a pretty traumatic experience. I swallowed some uh, food coloring by accident. And uh, the doc said, I'm okay, but I feel like I've died a little inside. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. We're rolling. All right, we're going to get to the Word of God. Uh, but I will, I'll, I'll preface it by saying this, and this is legit. And I think for me personally, it, it's also a reflection of what I see religiously. And that is that I've been repeating the same mistakes for so long that I might as well just call them traditions. <laughs> Amen? Now that's the way, that's what happens in religion. We keep repeating things. Somebody told us and they were wrong when they told us, but we just keep repeating it. 
And pretty soon it becomes a tradition, even though it's not the truth, even though it's not right, even though it's not the thing that we really want to experience. It becomes the same as a reality or the same as truth simply because we keep repeating it and keep saying it and keep believing it, even if it isn't the truth. And here's the deal. What we read on the surface of the Bible is absolutely true. But it can become traditional and we miss the spiritual that's underneath it, that he's trying to convey to us. We talked about it a little bit last week. Everything, the way Jesus taught, he always taught in parables. And that was because these people did not have the Spirit of God, so they could not receive spiritual things. So he would tell them stories or parables that were natural events and natural situations and circumstances that they could relate to, like fishing and building and different farming and so on and so forth, all the things that were part of their culture that they could relate to that they had experienced in the natural. And he'd do that to try to bring them into a spiritual truth, to try to then give them a spiritual truth. And that fundamentally is what the Bible is. Because it's, there's many, many stories, and they're factual, they're true, they're, they're, they're real things. But they're really not the message he's trying to give us. Because if we settle for just the story, we never get past the religious aspect of this thing. And so Jesus is trying to give us spiritual truths all the time, regardless of what it is that we're reading here, whether it's genealogies and some of those things that you just think, what in the world does that have to do with anybody, you know, 2,000, 4,000 years later? Well, there are truths hidden, amen, that God isn't hiding from us, but He's hiding for us. He's, looking, he's expecting us to seek first the kingdom of God the spiritual side of this thing so that he can then reveal these things to us. Amen. So with that in mind, let's begin. I want to start, uh, Sheila, at Ephesians chapter 5, and I want to read verses 22 through 32. Ephesians 5, 22 through 32. Praise the Lord. And we're going to keep coming back to this particular scripture as we work through this this morning, and I, I don't plan on taking a whole long time because we're going to Taco Man's later. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> For Sally's birthday. Amen. Uh, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. I'm feeling it already. Praise the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Verse 27, if you can go back to that, Sheila that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So your husband is the Spirit of Christ. Amen? Amen. Christ in you, the Spirit that lives in you, that Spirit is your husband. Amen? Remember I said last week, if you were here, if you weren't, I'll just repeat it for you. That word for soul or mind or the way that we think is suke. That's a Greek word and it's always feminine. Praise the Lord. The word for spirit is always in the masculine. The way that it's used in language. Amen. So we're not speaking about sexual identity here this morning. Not even when we're reading this particular story or this particular uh, you could call it a parable if you like but whatever however you want to define it we have beat up each other and marriage and everything else over this and I'm not saying there isn't a truth in that I'm just saying there's something far greater that God's trying to tell us than how to treat one another in a marriage right, exactly. 
Amen. So we're not speaking sexual identity, but we're speaking spiritual truth. Amen. We're talking about the mind submitting to the spirit. And then the spirit loving, which Christ, we know that he does. Amen. Without reservation. Amen. So the mind has to be renewed by the word of God. So we're talking spiritual truth here is what we're, what we're dealing with. Because it, the fact is, the bottom line is, there's only one revelation in this Bible. And it's Jesus Christ. And if you're not finding Him, yes. if you're not seeing Him in what it is you're reading, then you're missing the revelation. You're just getting information. Right. The information's great, but it isn't the, the real purpose of what God's giving it to us for. Yes. He wants to be revealed yes. in everything. And that's why we have this Word. Amen? So, this one revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. All right, so, with that in mind, let's go to Mark chapter 10. Verses 6 through 9. And we're talking about expectation. Uh, I've heard that word used over and over this morning. And believing that God's going to do something. That uh, all, these, all these things. It's not wrong. None of that is wrong. But I just want to... I want to... I want to get us to the place where we're not waiting on God anymore. Praise the Lord. Where we begin to experience what God has already done in the here and now. And, and, and our natural soul realm wants to tell us it's not yet, but it won't be long. Your mind always wants to keep you in the sense realm. Based on what I'm feeling, what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing in the natural. And as long as we do that... We hold back the Lord because He's already come. He's already in us. We're already one with Him. And I'm not trying to be hypercritical here. I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I don't want what I need next week. And why should I wait till next week when He did it 2,000 years ago? So there's a disconnect, and it's not between God and what He's done. It's between what He's done and what I believe that I have. Amen. Praise the Lord. So from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause, we talked about it last week. I won't go through all of it again. Yes, there are male gender and female gender, but that's not what we're talking about. He made them spirit and soul, spirit and flesh. And the flesh isn't just this. It's our humanity, our, our non-spirit side. Amen? So, from the beginning, that's how God, when God created Adam, He created him, Adam, and Eve. He created just Adam, but Eve and Adam were one. Then He takes Eve out of Adam, and they become two identities, two sexual identities, but within the two of them, they still had the same Male, female, male, female. Uh, you know, spirit, soul. So for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. They twain shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain. They're no more two, but they're one. That what therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So we could just say the same thing. When we get born again, he brings the spirit and the soul, the male and the female, he brings them together. And don't let any man, don't let any... Any spirit, separate that. Because the spirit of God, not, not, that's not what he's about. But that's what the spirit of the devil, that's what the spiritual influences try to do. Separate yes. the spirit from the mind. Tries to get the mind focused. Well, how does the devil work against you? He cannot affect your spirit. Right. Your spirit is it's the spirit of Christ. Right. The spirit that's in you has already defeated Christ. The only thing he can come against then is your soul, your mind. Yeah. So that's what he does. He uses symptoms. He uses financial issues. He uses relationships. He uses anything and everything, amen, that can attack your senses. Yes. 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 Now, if you're not one, there comes a separation. Right. Now you got marital strife. The man and the woman aren't seeing eye to eye. And again, I'm not talking about women in the sense of who you are out here. Because 
you got the same male spirit, the same masculine, the same spirit as I have a female spirit. This isn't gender. This isn't sexual. This is spiritual. Praise the Lord. So, where God is joined together, let no man, amen, put asunder. Praise God. So, we become one with Jesus in marriage. The two shall become one. Let no man separate that. Let nobody separate your soul from the spirit. Amen. Let me, all right, let's go to the Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 16. You say, well, what, what good is all of this? What the purpose for this is to make you think spiritually. So that when things come against you, not so I can just say, well, I never saw that before. That's not the issue. That's not the point. The point is to make you reevaluate the way you look at things. Because if you're not looking at it through spiritual eyes, you're not seeing it. You're seeing something, but it's not what he's trying to show you. Eyes you have, but you don't see. Ears you have to hear, but you're not, li you're not hearing. So his legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets. Suzanne brought me a, uh, I've talked about this before, but she brought me a, tape series on the Song of Solomon. And this was years ago. In fact, it was right after we first moved over into this building. And uh, I mean, it kind of made me uncomfortable, to be quite honest with you. This is really kind of, I, I don't know, it's not the right word, but it seems right in my mind. Smarmy, you know, kind of just Joyce Meyery, lovey. And I, I would just, it was, I couldn't really get past that part of it. So, and I'm thinking, you know, this is about Jesus and his bride, and I'm supposed to be the bride, and I cannot relate. Don, I mentioned this, you know, last Sunday. It just, it's just hard as a guy to think that way. And I'm sure it is for women to feel the same way, to be called sons of God, and you're always thinking about, well, what, what, you know, what's that? Yeah. But it's because we always think in gender and sexual identity terms rather than spiritually speaking, spiritually understanding. But anyhow... This is, this is where this is coming from. So his legs are as pillars of marble, set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. Amen. I need verse 16, please. His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. That's the point I'm trying to make here. His mouth is more, most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Now remember, Israel is all daughters in the spiritual sense because the spirit had not been poured out. The spirit could move on them and influence them, but the spirit didn't dwell in them. So here's what he's saying. If he's not all together, then he's not lovely. Praise the Lord. He's, he's, he is altogether lovely. When he's not all together, he's not lovely. And that word lovely, I, I, have, I just looked it up even this morning just to be sure, is makad in the Hebrew, and it means great, a precious thing. So when he's not all together, he's not so great. Now that's, we're talking about perception now. He's who he is, whether we, you know, regardless, that doesn't change. God is God, right? But our perception of God obviously influences our relationship with God. People that don't believe God have no God. Doesn't mean God isn't there. Doesn't mean God isn't just as real. It just means they have, have no, no benefit. All right. So we're supposed to come together, bone of his bone. We just read the scriptures a moment ago and flesh of his flesh as his body, as his wife. We come together. And when we come together, he is all together. And there is a release of power and manifestation. As long as your suke is separate from your spirit, you haven't all come together and you're not experiencing the great that he is. You're not experiencing because it's not all together. Are you with me? Amen. Suke. You think, my name is Sue. How do you do? You know, I mean, we don't... We don't think that, that way, you know, to, to a guy that's like, well, who would name their boy Sue? <laughs> but I mean, and I know there is no connection here other than it just kind of <laughs> there, praise the Lord. Unless we come together, though, is my point. Unless our soul and our 
spirit become one unless there is that marriage between who I am as a person and who he is as God then there is no real manifestation there unless we're all together there it isn't that great it's better than it was but it's not great unless I come together then there's manifestation Am I making sense? So I'm, I'm, my purpose, my mind, in my mind is to get my mind renewed so that it agrees with who I am spiritually so that I can get the stuff that he's already given me, that already belongs to me, instead of trying to figure it out in my head, why haven't I got my financial breakthrough? Why, why haven't I, my, my relationship all been restored? Why haven't, you know, my health been completely re It's because I'm still fighting with the natural. I'm still fighting this, this, this unity has not taken place between husband and wife something amen has come between that yeah. that bridal uh, uh, you know relationship that husband wife relationship and so it creates issues yes. Yes. praise the Lord yes. hmm. wow. Ezekiel chapter 57 verse 1 through 5 now I know you know there's for every every scripture in here, you can find, I, I suspect, unlimited revelation. Yes. Just however God, I mean, you, you all know, you've read, just like Don's talking about, you read stuff and you go, what the heck is that? Right. But when God puts you in the right context, all of a sudden, what made absolutely no sense before now makes perfect sense. Yes. And there's, that's the way the scripture is. That's the way the word of God is. It has layers. It has that way it's new it's like him it's new every day yes. now you might read the same thing but one day you're looking for this right. he's what you need right I mean he is your healer he is your deliverer he is your prosperity he's all those things so what it is that you're needing that's what he wants to reveal to you right. at that given time yes. it doesn't mean that he isn't what he was yesterday when he showed you something else it just means that he that he's more yes. there's more to him than that yes. amen so moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel. And in, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways. This is not the scripture I want. I want Ezekiel 37, 1 through 5. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So get it. The spirit of the Lord set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And it caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, now remember, he has told us we are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Yes. When we're united. Yes. Amen. So there were many in the valley, and they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, O Lord God, thou knowest. Separate from him, we're dead. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. The, bone has, the bones have to come together. Not my bones, but my bones and his bone. i got to become bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. That's what we're talking about. So again he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones. And say unto them... O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath yes. to enter into you, and you shall live. Yes. Praise God. That's what, we, that's what we're doing, amen, when we come together and we're, ta and we're sharing yes. things about the Lord. We're feeling God come alive in us. Not that he wasn't alive in us before, but for some reason, you know, we're, we're, because we're out here in the world and we're dealing with all the natural stuff, then we come in here and all of a sudden we become more aware of our oneness with God and our oneness with one another, especially as we begin to share things that resonate with us spiritually. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, drop down to verse 10 and we'll read verses 10 through 14. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto me. So he said, I said what he said. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. The spirit came to this flesh, or to this. And they lived. All of a sudden, now they're alive. And they stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. They weren't just a human now with you know bones work but now because they become one with him they become an exceeding great army praise the Lord the army of the Lord we talked about it I will 
ride with you. You know, I will fight for you. I will fight with you and so on and so forth. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, say again what I say. Behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves yes. and cause you to come up out of your graves yes. and bring you into the land yes. of Israel. Hallelujah. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Yes. And shall put my spirit in you. And you shall live and shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we come together with Him, when we are united with Him, when our soul and our spirit become one, we are in the promised land. We are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. We are where God is and all things are possible now. So it's like Ezekiel. We are witnessing bones coming together. If we don't assemble, in other words, if we don't come together with God, We mar his visage. We diminish his reality. That's what the church has done for millennia. And I'm not talking about, you know, in a hateful way. I'm just saying that's what religion has done. It has marred his visage because we haven't become one with him. Amen. We have just recognized that he's God and I'm me. Yeah. And my circumstances are still ruled by this yeah. instead of by this, instead of by him. Yes. And because of that, then the image that I portray of him is marred. Yes, it is. It's not realistic. Right. It's humanistic. Right. It's based on what I'm doing and have and, and, and I'm going through instead of what he has said. Yes. Am I making sense? Praise the Lord. That's what I'm trying to get us to, to understand. There's a spiritual reality here and we keep... We're like Jesus said, hey, you're like children playing in the marketplace. All of this business is going on up here, and you're still down here playing church instead of being church. Praise God. But when we are connected to Him, mind, soul, spirit, He is altogether lovely. And with him, we become an exceeding great army. Yes. We become undefeatable. Yes. We become more than conquerors. Yes. We become victorious over every situation and every circumstance. Yes. Remember, Elijah said, his, his, his servant said, oh my God, look, all the, in, all the enemy's army is out here. We're busted. We're down. We're, we're just, we're had. And Elijah said, oh, Lord, open his eyes. Yes. yes. And he saw the angelic force, the armies of God surrounding the army of the flesh. And they were more that were with us than they that were against us. Praise the Lord. And I know it's cliche, but it's still true. You and God together make a majority in any situation and over every circumstance. Praise the Lord. Verse 14, if you can bring that back up. Ezekiel 37, verse 14. And shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. See, marriage... This, this is how we get a new name. Yeah. Remember, we, we've talked about this here a while back. We have a new, we, there's a song. There's a new name written down in glory. Well, it's not Nathan. Because he said he was going to give me a new name. Yes. Praise the Lord. Ephesians, let's go back there. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. See, I don't want my mistakes to become traditions. I want my mistakes to be identified so I can move on. I don't want to just keep going over and over the same stuff. 
and just be content with it because it's what I used to believe. I mean, I know everybody in here, what you believe today is not the same as what you believed right. 10 years ago. Right. There are some things that you believe today that you believed 10 years ago, but there are some things you know now yes. that, that aren't the same as what, the way you believed them 10 or 15 years ago. Right. Why? Because you've been open and accepting that God would show you something else, and you weren't afraid to step out in faith right. and embrace it. So husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Praise the Lord. So here's the deal. Jesus isn't going to sanctify his bride. He already has. He's not going to marry us we are husband and wife. He's not going to get the church ready someday. I'm talking about the body of Christ. It's ready. He did it at the cross. Praise the Lord. Look, look at this. John chapter 19, uh, verses 30 through 34. John 19, 30 through 34. So when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation, it was coming up on Passover, we all know this, the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was a high day. It, was the, it wasn't just Sabbath, but it was Passover. So he besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So they're going to break their legs make sure that they were all dead. Then he come, came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and, and the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they didn't break his legs. Verse 34, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and immediately, or forthwith, came there out blood and water. So Jesus isn't going to sanctify his bride. He already has. That blood and that water is what cleansed us, is what cleansed his bride. Praise the Lord. Amen. If the blood and the water from the side couldn't do it, the preaching of the Word will not do it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because washing with the water of the Word, that's, that's the preaching, that's the teaching. Amen. What it teaches us is that what Jesus has already done. It's not teaching us. Well, if it's being preached the way it's in the Bible, it's not telling us what He's going to do. He taught, the first thing he said was, it's finished. And if we're not preaching the finished work of the cross, then we're preaching something other than the truth. And it will never bring us to a place, amen, that Jesus has already placed us. Yes. It's not, all the preaching in the world isn't going to cleanse you. It, the, the thing it hopes to do is to make you aware of your cleansing. To make you conscious, amen, of who you are in Christ. To make your mind understand what has already happened to you spiritually. Yes. That's the washing of the water by the Word. Yes. It cannot by itself change a person. It can't cleanse them of their sins or their unrighteousness. It makes them aware of what Jesus has already done. Yes. Praise the Lord. Alright, so back up to verse 25. Still here in John 19, verse 25 through 27. And so again, here, Jesus is still on the cross, but this prior to his death. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by, which was John, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And then he saith to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. But now here's what's interesting. He doesn't say, Mom. He doesn't say, Mama. He doesn't say, Mother. He says, Woman. Right? Woman. That's your son now. What I'm saying is, this is woman. He says, Woman. He's speaking to the soul. He's speaking to the mind. Amen. He's speaking to Eve. Yes. The first. Yes. Amen. And what he's saying is, C 
seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent. And he's saying that seed is before you right now. And then he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, here's, here's what's interesting. What's he saying? He's separating himself from his mother. It's not mother, it's woman. And he's separated from his father because he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Back to Mark 10 and verse 7. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Wow. See, a deep sleep fell on Adam, the scripture says. And when he woke up, he had a wife. Yes. Wasn't quite that simple for me. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Jesus fell asleep in death, and three days later he woke up with a bride. Yeah. Hmm. So this, yes, there's a, there's a, a, a reality, there's a truth, a, just a natural truth, but there's also this spiritual truth, just like with Adam. Adam was the masculine, the, the spirit was supposed to be protecting his mind, yes. his Eve. Yes. And we've made it all about some macho guy didn't look out for his little wife. Adam ate the same junk that she ate. And she didn't twist his arm and make him do it. It's talking about a spiritual reality, amen, that we overlook and are settled and settling for just natural stuff, which doesn't get us where we want to go. It, isn't, it doesn't bring us to the finished work. It doesn't show us what God is really trying to tell us. Praise the Lord. Now, we've, we've heard it preached. He's coming back. We just sang it a couple of minutes ago, and I'm not criticizing the songs. I'm just saying. We heard it preached. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. But what does the Bible actually say? Look at, again, let's go back to Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So by the works of his sanctifying and cleansing the word, he's going to present a church that is full of glory. Praise the Lord. It's like Ezekiel's dry bones, right? His word exerts power over the church to the place where he presents her to himself glorious. He presents it to himself glorious. His death purged us. His death cleansed us, the church. Praise the Lord. And we are holy. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are. We're not trying to get there. We are. It's this that doesn't, doesn't recognize or, or acknowledge it, but this knows we are already as good as we're ever going to get. Yes. We are perfect. Yes. We declare to one another while we come together. That's why we bind together. That's why we join together. That's why we come together. Is to declare to one another what is already true of each of us. Yes. So the truth will make us free. Yes. Yes. We are, are, right now, one with Him. I can write checks on His account. Yes. Praise the Lord. I can make withdrawals Amen. from His riches and glory. Yes. Because I operate in a new name. His name. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. And the beauty of this is it really is like some people think. I must still have money because I still got checks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> the checkbook is never empty. That's right. As long as you write a check, yes. Yes. it'll be cashed. Yes. Praise the Lord. 
whatever you ask in my name, yes. believing yes. you have it. Yes. Praise God. Colossians 1, verse 27. Colossians 1, 27. This great mystery we're talking about. Amen. And we've read this many, many times, but it doesn't hurt. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. The riches of this glory among us. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Amen. The hope. Hallelujah. That, that Rita so rightfully spoke of this morning. Hallelujah. Hope. John chapter 15 verses 4 through 8. John 15 4 through 8. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. Herein... And by that is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So here's the deal. If we aren't married to Him right now, if we are not right now in union with Him, then whatever we produce is illegitimate. And we can shout about it all we want. And we can get goosebumps and we can do everything else. But if we're not operating in Him, this is what Don was talking about. It's, it may sound crazy. It doesn't matter what it sounds like to your head. He's talking to your spirit. And we just have to filter that through this brain. And if the brain won't submit to the spirit, then we don't get what it is he's trying to get us. Is that right? Amen. amen. Because it sounds crazy when he tells you, amen, just march around the, you know, the walls eight times and then blow a horn. Amen. When there had been probably hundreds of years of armies coming and going trying to get into Jericho and weren't because of the walls they were unable to. And believe me, these guys understood that's formidable. That's not going to be easy to overcome. And so God doesn't tell them how to build a, 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 some kind of siege weapon or a, a ramp to overcome it. or anything. He just says, look, here. Now they had to, they didn't have the spirit. So they had to figure out that the Spirit was saying something to them that didn't fit their natural way of thinking. So in that sense, they exercised faith. How much more should we that have the Holy Spirit move in that reality? Just because it doesn't make sense here. In fact, if it makes a whole lot of sense here, it's probably not God. It's probably something you've reasoned out or thought, well, this makes sense. I think it will work. And then we blame God when it fails. Right. If we're not right now one with Him, not right now married with Him, not only whatever we produce is illegitimate, we don't have any right to intimacy, and we don't have any right to a manifestation of the Spirit. So just think about this. It isn't God withholding anything. It's me not being able to become one with Him. And when I'm not married to Him in that, by that definition, I'm not intimate with Him. And if I'm not intimate with Him, there is no fruit. There is no manifestation, whatever that manifestation might be that I'm looking for. So can you see why He, he makes such an issue of renewing your mind to the Word of God? He's saying... You need to hook up with Jesus. Your, your, your female needs to hook up with this male, amen, if you're expecting any kind of fruit, if you're expecting any kind of production, if you're expecting any kind of blessing or, or, or promise to come to pass, to be fulfilled. The only way it can happen is this way. And you'll know, in fact, I know we've talked about this before, but you know, when it happens, man, I'm telling you, you'll feel spiritual. It may not last a long time, but for a moment, for a few seconds, for a minute, for when, the, when the thing happens, you're going, my God, 
I've had an encounter here. I've had a, I've had a connect. I've had an intimacy with God. All of a sudden, He's more real than I am. He's more real than anything that's going on around me. He's more real than my senses. Why is that? Because we have made that complete connection. It's constant that we have to renew our mind. Because we're living in a world that is not connected. That is not renewed to God. Even, even much that claims to be of God is not. They just believe that there is a God. They're just, but they're not connected. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 and 23. And it's just, see, what we struggle with and think is, you know, it's all about faith. It's believing. It's just believing. If we could believe, we don't have, faith would take care of itself. Just believe what He said. And we're, we're trying to get faith. We have the spirit of faith. Because we have Him. It's our mind that gets in the way of our faith. Your mind is how you believe. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Now look at this. Look at the, the way he says it. You are come. You are there. You have already arrived. Unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of men made perfect. Yes. Yeah. Perfecto. Yes. That's us. We are perfect. Yes. We have been made perfect. Yes. The only thing that argues with that is this. Yes. Because it has another realm that it that it operates in and it sees the flaws. It sees my continuous mistake over and over and over that I eventually start calling a tradition. But he doesn't. He sees me perfect. Praise the Lord. See, there's just no end to what God would speak to us if we would just stop the one of these days mentality and realize our present inheritance is ours right now. Our perfection in Christ. Yes. Amen. Our right. Our right to these yes. things. So I'm just saying it's time, it's time that we experience, yes. that we enjoy yes. and walk in our full identity. Yes. You know, I'm not, I know this is natural today and I'm not debating it, but I'm just saying we have, you know, S Sally could describe herself as Sally Hamlin Howard. Right? Because that was her maiden name. And, it, and a lot of people do. I, th I think it's just because of this idea that we don't see everybody as equal. Right. And the woman doesn't want to give up some of her identity. Right. Because she feels like she's being diminished. Right? Right? I'm, I'm not a woman, so I don't know that for a fact. I'm just thinking. But I'm not Nathan Hamlin or Nathan Christ Hamlin. That guy's dead. I'm Nathan Christ, if you want to use that analogy. He's dead. I was buried with him in baptism, and I rose up in newness of life. The life that I now live. I don't live by Nathan. I live by Christ. Yes. That doesn't mean I'm trying to emulate him. It doesn't mean I'm trying to be perfect like Jesus was. Amen. I want to be decent. I mean, I want to be a moral and, and, and good person. But I'm already the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm already perfect in Him. Right. So my focus needs to be on Him. Otherwise, all I see is flaws. Right. Sure. And reasons for why I shouldn't have the things that He's promised me. I'm not, you know, she's not Sally Hamlin Howard. She's Sally Christ. Yes. 
with all of the benefits, with all of the rights, with all of the privileges, amen, that come from being equal with Him. Yes. Not being to me, not being less, but being equal. Yes. He has made us joint heirs. That's what He said. I'm not ashamed to call you brother. I'm not ashamed to say you. I was just the firstborn of many brethren. Praise God. All right, we'll, last scripture. We'll finish with this. Ezra chapter 2. Ezra chapter 2, verse 62 and 63. See, we are, He has made us because He is the high priest. You know, I, I'm not going to presuppose anything, but just, 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 we'll just say this for example. My, my dad had several businesses. My mother was a co-owner of those businesses. She didn't operate him, although she did run a couple, or run at least one of them after, his, after he died. But what, during his lifetime, she wasn't really involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the business. But she was a co-owner. Because they're married. What's his is hers. Amen? We are co-operators with God. Amen? And we don't have to really be doing anything other than to be married to Him. Right. And we have all the benefits. Yes, yes. As if I were running the company. Right. Amen. He's given us authority. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. This is a branch office. Yes. The earth. Yes. So these sought their register. We became priests. He's the high priest. And what does He say? He's the king of kings. But he said, when you marry me, you become a king and a priest. Yes. You didn't do anything, you just automatically do. Amen. So here he says, these sought their registry among those who were reckoned by genealogy. But they were not found. Therefore, were they as polluted and put out of the priesthood. Why? Because they couldn't find their connection. They couldn't find any genealogical record that showed that they were who they said they were. And the Tershatha said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with the Urim and Thummim. And that was the, the stones that would tell whether a person was innocent or guilty and so on and so forth. So he said, you can't eat any of the holy stuff until somebody shows us who the heck you really are. Amen? So our high priest, we have already read it a couple of times here this morning, has declared us perfect. Amen? Has declared us one with Him. Yes. We've got a new name. It's Jesus. Yes. The righteousness of God. And here's the point. We can eat. We can feed on the finished work of the cross. Yes. We have a right table of God. Yes. We are kings and priests. We are the bride of Christ. We are one with God. Yes. We're like Mephibosheth. Yeah. We never have to get up from the king's table. Yeah. And we don't have to do a thing but sit there and say, pass the... Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Clap this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I just want, I want to encourage you. Let's quit putting stuff off. Let's quit saying yes. next week, next month, next year, somehow, some yes. way. Just, yes. it's mine. Let's just start receiving it. Let's just start believing it. Let's start confessing it. Let's start eating, amen, feeding on the finished work of the cross instead of, you know, holding off. In fact, you know, I'm through fasting, praise the Lord. You know why? Because he said, you, the, it's only the bride's groom, they fast until the wedding, until the groom comes. Amen? Yeah. Well, we are married. Yeah. I don't have to wait for a wedding feast in heaven. There will be a great celebration. I'm not saying there won't be. But we are already his bride, and we can benefit. We can celebrate that and experience that right here and right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, 
Amen. We've got to discipline ourselves. That's what a disciple is. It isn't disciplining yourself to never say a bad word or to never, you know, have a drink of beer or a glass of wine or, or any. I'm not, I'm not picking your poison here, okay? I'm not saying do or don't do. I'm just saying we have made things the obstacle that are not the obstacle. If our minds are renewed to our true identity, there's a lot of crap we would just put down simply because it's not important anymore. Right. And I'm not saying what that is, because what your crap might not be mine. Amen? You know what I'm saying? We all got stuff that may be a hindrance to us. Doesn't make it a hindrance to somebody else. We need to be realistic about this, but at the same time we need to understand, we've been made perfect if we would start living out of that reality. A lot of the things that hinder us, a lot of the things that bother us, would be taken care of. But I'm telling you, the people that struggle, including myself, in the areas that I do struggle, is the areas that I have not renewed my mind to the reality of who I am in Christ. That's the battle. And that's who the enemy comes against. That right there. He doesn't come against my spirit because he has no hope of defeating me there. He has to come to my intellect. He has to come to my past experiences. He has to come to my failures. He has to come to those things that I've already gone through and tell you that's who you are. That's your truth. That's the reality of who you are. And then he's got you captive. Fear, anxiety, because we don't really understand our true identity. If we could get people out there to see a real, true picture of Him, they would see Him as altogether lovely too. But when they don't see Him altogether lovely, when they don't see Him the whole picture, then He's marred, then He's flawed, then He's just a prophet, then He's just your God. And not the God. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience. Amen. Have a great week. Amen. And uh, hope we'll see you here Wednesday. And if not, next Sunday. God bless you. Go in His Spirit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>